Yay! I'm here today. Yay! I want to go back to this top of the picture thing here. I, I, you know, like to put something up so that when people are logging on, you know, it gives us a couple minutes to get going on the whole thing. And I saw this adorable cartoon by Amy Bradley. And I, <laughs> I'm the one in the blue, just saying right I'm the one in the blue. Which one are you? <laughs> so, anyways, good job, Amy Bradley. Okay, so listen, um, I am here. I'm feeling very, very, very well because I have what you would call, is it called a buy when a when a game skips a week. I had a buy this week where I didn't have to go in and get <laughs> and all that. So I think they know when a patient's at their wits end <laughs> and, and they let me have a little time off. And yesterday I got to go <clears throat> up to Walnut Creek to my mini group. So that was fabulous. I know I have to be careful with my time. Normally I'm at my mini groups for I don't know, two hours, and after an hour, I said, I'm bye-bye, you know, so I'm being very conservative with my energy, but oh my gosh, what a difference a week makes, and I'm just bracing myself for next week when I get more, like a pump, <laughs> pump them up, <laughs> and then I won't look like the lady in the blue. <laughs> so, I got some cool things to share with you, but then we're going to get into uh, Barbara Black. Uh, let me let me let, let me share some cool things with you, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so Suzanne sent me this picture, and I'm sorry if you sent me things and they have been lost. Um, if you've sent me something and it doesn't go up this morning, it's been lost. So help me out, help me, Rhonda. So this she made for her husband, I think Bill is his name, I didn't write that down, and this was one of her first attempts at free motion quilting on, I think, an, a long arm or a frame, or maybe just on her domestic, but I will tell you, for first shot out of the barrel, you can pass yourself on the back. I, that is not easy, and everybody, look at the size of that quilt. I mean, that's not a twin size, you know? And then she sent me this, and I think this is just adorable. I, I love the camel because we have the camel on 680 and the zebra. Um, look at that little, look at that little, little face. So um, thank you. Then Kathy, oh, Kathy and I were in sync this morning. She sent me like four or five pictures, and they were blurry. And I said, Kathy, I really want to share this but I can't share them at the resolution that they're at. And so, so we were mightily, tech, uh, not texting, emailing back and forth, thank you for sending it. Uh, she had this, and then also my flower garden I'm gonna show you. And she said she just, the, the brights, the happiness just makes her happy. I love the quilting on this. Look in the spools with the feathers. I wouldn't have thought of that. And also, I love the crumb catcher right before the white binding. So, Kathy, thank you. And then what's this one? Okay, I also, Kathy, if you're here, chirp in. Um, those stitches are perfect. Look at those stitches, people. I mean, I can get it on my Q20 because it's got the double stitch regulator, but um, I, I could not do that on my best day. So Kathy, if you're here, tell us what machine you're on and what you're using because those are just gorgeous. And yes, I still have the $100 coupons for uh, any Bernina product over a thousand. The main thing is that I just, you have to request it before you purchase it. And then you got 30 days to turn it in. Okay, what else? Okay, then Kathy sent this one too. And this was Dee's class. And um, the pattern is My Flower Garden by Mendy Sloan. I love this. I love this quilt too. I just think, I I'm, I'm, want to kick myself in the rear end that I didn't come up with that pattern. And then the quilting on this is a little difficult to see because of the red. And Kathy, you sent me two photographs, and this was the one that I thought I could dig in 
the closest with. But one of the tricks that I do, and I see it going on here, I believe, is that when you have a motif like, say, the flower, or like this, or like that, you can repeat it in the quilting design. And then I love how you filled in with the feathers and the and the plumes and all of that. So thank you. And again, thank you. We were on a roll this morning. Um, I was still in my jammers. Okay, so then Kay sent me this, all right? This is a quilt um, by Sarah, well, Sarah Phil, oh, I'm sorry, no, this is Kim Deal. Sorry, Kim Deal did a knockout show for us, absolutely knockout. And um, Kay didn't want the full large size quilt and so she made these four wall hangings. And honestly, they are stunning. So let's say you've got a space in your house that's not large. I mean, I have no idea if this is a big wall or a little wall or something like that. I think this is an extremely efficient and beautiful way to be able to put out your textiles for other people to see. And as soon as you mount them, you've added a whole nother level of sophistication, in my humble opinion. All right. And then Lori, oh, Lori sent me this picture and she said she was addicted, just addicted. You guys, as I look through these, I can't even believe what we have learned and gone through since the beginning of the pandemic. I just can't even believe it. And in fact, I'm going somewhere this weekend where I have to stitch, and I think I'm going to get out my neutral one and start stitching on it. So thank you. And then this is the one. Trudy sent me this. This is a Sarah Filkey pattern that she saw up at, um, oh shoot, I didn't write down where she saw it, um, but it was made by um, Joanne Rodriguez, and I think it's absolutely Beautiful. So congratulations, Joanne. I, we love Sarah Filkey's work. Just love it. So they got something going on, those Aussies. And then, okay, here's, here's the big question. Um, Sandra sent me this this morning. This is my pattern. Um, I think I call it triangle twist or it started, I don't know what I call it. Anyways, it started as a class at Alden Lane that was supposed to be a one day class. And I went crazy on it. And I and I show different ways to do triangles, different maneuvers, this and that. And and I love this quilt. It's big people. Well she is gonna put it in um she's in Alberta and she's gonna put it in a contest and I wish you nothing but the best, best, best of luck. I love this quilt. I can't even. And then I started thinking, no promises here. We are going to do neckties. Don't worry about it. No promises here. Would this be an interesting project for us to do as I get back in the saddle? Um, I mean, there's a ton of piecing maneuvers. There's applique. There's just all sorts of different things. So... Um, what do you think, you guys? Would this be a fun thing to do down the road? I don't know when, um, whatever, but yeah. And so, and I even thought, I wonder if we could score some oak shots or something. Um, they're having their own issues right now, but I used a lot of oak shots in this. Okay, good. I'm liking the comments. Liking, liking, liking. Okay, so here's what happened. Barbara Black, we sent her two brand new specialty rulers, okay, Whoop, by Quilter Select. And so she did a video on this one, which is a three-in-one tool. And then she did a video on this one. And, and John said, let's combine them. So this video is going to run a little bit long. I would have, I, my brain doesn't even think like this, but Barbara's does. Uh, it was so funny. She's going to be teaching at Asilomar coming soon or next year. I'm not quite sure when. And she asked me if I would be her substitute because that's what they do there. If you're going to teach there, you have to give a substitute. And she's teaching some killer beautiful pattern. And I said, 
that is absolutely something I will not do for you. <laughs> I don't read patterns. But so I said, I'll do anything for you, Barbara, but I will not be your backup teacher. Um, I think she got Becky Goldsmith and gosh, who was the other one? If you're here, Barbara, you can put it up um, as her backup dancers, not me. So when we sent these to Barbara, she created these two videos. I've always wanted to make a thousand pyramids um, a quilt, scared to death of it. And what's so great about these videos where Barbara's going to be teaching about these rulers, it's not just a big fat sales pitch. You're going to learn something here. So let's take a look, see, and then I will tell you how you could possibly be one of the people that we're going to give away uh, four sets. But let's take a look at the video first, okay? Hi, I'm Barbara Black. I recently had an opportunity to test a couple of new rulers from Quilters Select. Uh, Quilter Select rulers have the original anti-slip coating on the back of them, making them a really great choice for us to be able to cut accurately. Uh, so I've done two little videos. I'm going to show them both to you here. The first one is on the three-in-one combo half-square triangle ruler. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Barbara Black, and I want to talk to you about the 3-in-1 half-square combo ruler by Quilter Select, a division of R&K. Quilter Select rulers come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes, and they all have the original non-slip coating that makes such a difference in how accurately we can cut. I often say the only three things we can do wrong in piecing a quilt block is the cutting, the sewing, and or the pressing. And it all starts with the cutting. So the quilt behind me is an original design of mine. It's called My Favorite Things. It's a lot of my favorite blocks and my favorite shapes. And many of those blocks include squares, half square triangles, and quarter square triangles. And I'm going to show you how this one ruler can help you cut them all. So let's take a look. The Quilter Select 3-in-1 Half Square Combo Ruler includes, just like you would think, three different shapes in one ruler. There is a QR code on the packaging that will take you right to videos and information on the website. Uh, you can go directly to the website. It's quilterselect.com to find them as well. There's a lot of great information right there at your fingertips to show how to use the ruler. The ruler has these various shapes included. Now it has this wonderful non-slip coating and I have found that I teach a lot of beginners classes and I have found that when the students start using the quality tools they do so much better particularly with cutting when they're using one of these non-slip rulers. Um, to protect the non-slip coating on the back, we want to make sure that we keep it as good and usable for as long as possible, and it will last a long, long time. It does better if we keep our hands off of it. So, you know, there's oil in our fingers, uh, maybe there's sanitizer on our hands, there's hand cream, uh, lotions, things like that that can impact the coatings. So you want to just keep those off. The easiest way to lift the ruler is these one of these little suction cup type of handles. Uh, this one's by Quilter Select, and it makes it very easy to lift the ruler to turn it when you're going to need to, which we'll do frequently. It's just a handy dandy little tool to have. So this is a block that I often teach in a beginner's class. Um, it's a variation of an Ohio star. I've heard it named Swamp Angel, which is an odd name for a pretty block. Uh, what I like about this when I'm teaching beginners is it includes a square, half square triangle units, and quarter square triangle units. These star points are quarter square triangle units. Um, so this one ruler will allow you to cut all of those pieces. So let's take a look. Uh, this is a nine inch block. So we'll just run the numbers for a second. This is a nine inch block. It's an equilateral nine patch, uh, meaning that each section is exactly one third of the block. So this three inch finished block 
uh, the center that I cut had to be cut three and a half. And each of these units also have to end up at three and a half so that we can put the block together and have a nine inch finished block, which means when it is sewn into the quilt. So here is a new center I'm considering for uh, the next one of these blocks that I'm going to make. And it's just, it's already been cut to three and a half. And I will show you with this piece of fabric how you can cut a three and a half inch square using this ruler. Well, we know that if we need a three and a half inch square, we add three inch finished, we add a half an inch. Therefore, I need a strip that's three and a half. I simply turn to the part of the ruler that says square, shows a little picture of a square, and I've got the various lines here, and I'm looking for three and a half. So down here on the bottom, I have three and a half, comes across there, I have three and a half this way, and one of the things I love about square rulers is that they have this diagonal line, upper right to the lower left, I come down there and I can see that this is a square. If you have it off and that diagonal line does not come down there, then I'm not cutting a square. So I just as a double check for me, I always tell students, you've paid for all of the lines on the rulers, you ought to use the lines on the rulers. So here I am at three and a half and three and a half, and I would simply use my rotary cutter and come up here and cut a three and a half inch square. It is as easy as that for cutting a square. So now let's look at the half square triangles. That's simply a square that has been cut in half on the diagonal with two equal sized triangles. That is a half square triangle. And it also has to finish, it has, has to finish in the quilt at three, therefore we need it to be three and a half inches now. So the math is very simple. We take a uh, the finished size, which is three inches, and we add a half an inch to it. So these strips are cut three and a half. I have a blue one and a white one here. We're going to cut half square triangles, so we turn on the ruler to the section that makes half square triangles. There's a picture of it as well as the words, and now I know exactly where to place the ruler. I place it at the three and a half inch line, the size that you cut the strips. It goes right there. I don't usually worry about cleaning this edge up completely right now. I'm going to trim every one of these. After I make any half square, any unit that I make, I press it and then I double check to make sure it's right. And at that point, I trim off any excess. So I'm not concerned about that being not exactly lined up right there. I'm going to make this first cut and right across here. Come straight up. And then we rotate the ruler, which just means we don't flip it over, we just rotate it. And I move it back, and now I want the three and a half line up there along the top. Make sure I can see it. The diagonal should be right here still on the diagonal. And the beauty of this ruler is that it has that chopped off tip at the end. You know, in Quilter's Math, if you were cutting squares to make three inch half square triangles, they would tell you to cut a square three and seven eighths. We've cut three and a half and eliminated that little extra three eighths of an inch piece of dog ear fabric that we're going to throw away anyway. It's just not even there. That's why we can use three and a half as we make these. So I've turned this next one here and I'm ready to make this cut. I'm going to just come up like this. And then I would rotate again, putting this one down here, and I would run along till I had the numbers that I needed, the full numbers. For, for my square, I need four corners that are that way. So I have already cut a couple of extras, and I have these two. And here's two more. And they're ready to be sewn. Now through the beauty of video, here I have two others that are sewn. These are these orange dragonflies that have already been made. I've cut those earlier and did the sewing for those. And what you can see is how that, the great part of having that ch chopped off tip up there, the squared off tip. You know, when we go to put um, points on our machine, start to feed them in. If I was feeding this side, a lot of times the machine will eat the point, particularly if you don't have a single whole throat plate in place. So by working with this flat edge up here, it's not going to happen. That doesn't get eaten as it goes through. And they feed right after the other. I've got those two. I would continue to chain piece them all along the next one and the next one and the next one, etc., all the way through. When I had them all sewn, I would take them to my ironing board. I pressed 
them, I always, in this case, I would press toward the darker side. Some people press the seams open. Uh, and then I would trim it exactly. Again, I can use the square portion of this ruler to turn it back into, make sure it's exactly three and a half. So that's how the half square triangles work. We move on to the quarter square triangles, and those again with this block are the star points. I have one background fabric, a white. I have two star points, and an accent color here is a different color. So I need in this, to make this little section, I would need two star point colors, one white background, and one additional accent. In this case, I'm using yellow. So the math for that part is really easy as well. We um, know what size the finished size is on the outside edge of this block. Finished, when it's sewn in the quilt, that's three inches. Three divided by two is one and a half plus a half is two. So all I need is a two inch strip of the two fabrics that I want to cut. And I could stack them all up here. I've got them ready. These were leftovers. Okay. I've got a white and a green because again, here's the piece. I need a white and a green and a yellow and a green. So I have the white and the green and the yellow and the green. And they're all two inch strips. I am now cutting quarter square triangles. So I turn to the part on the ruler that says quarter square triangle and it shows you the little shape. Okay, and again, it's so easy to, to remember what size, where, what line should you use? The line that matches the strip cut size. Two inches, no problem. That's a two inch size. And so I just have those lined up. This time I'll stand up. Okay. Get those right along there and I come straight up and straight over. Sure, I got them all good. Usually standing up that way can be difficult to get them. All right, got that all there. Okay, so here I have two greens, two whites, uh, one white and a yellow, and they're ready to be sewn. That's the beauty about this when I stack them up as a as four layers. This is enough to make one of these blocks. For my quilt block, I need a total of four. So I would simply continue with my cutting. I have this laid together, and now that I've rearranged it. It's a little bit askew, so I would make sure that I kept it straight. But then I come right back with this, and I would cut on this side two inches. And then I would rotate over this side and do two inches until I had them all done. Earlier, I cut um, another set of these, so I have um, a beginning to another, to another set ready to go. And that's all it takes to cut quarter square triangles with this ruler. So the, let's go back and uh, just to, to focus again on this great little ruler. The, it is, I, I said it's a mouthful of a name, the three and one half square combo ruler. You're just going to call it that big ruler that does everything. It, it, it's, it will replace three tools. I'm getting ready to go to a retreat. I can pick this one ruler up and not have to bring three smaller rulers that, um, it takes the place up, which is just a really great thing. So I hope that you'll consider the three and one half square combo ruler from Quilter Select. Well, um, so that's the first video on that first ruler. Um, the interesting thing I forgot to mention, I uh, thought I would just point out that the corner that does squares, you can make multiple sizes of all of these shapes, but the squares corners are marked so that you could make anything from a half inch finished square to a six inch finished square. There's a lot of lines on that ruler. So now let's look at the other video where I'm going to show you the 60 degree triangle ruler. Hi, I am Barbara Black, and I want to talk to you about the 60-degree triangle ruler from Quilters Select, a division of RNK. The Quilters Select rulers are the original non-slip coating uh, on their rulers, and they make a wide variety of rulers in lots of sizes and shapes. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at the 60-degree triangle ruler. The 60 degree triangle ruler is a wonderful tool that I've enjoyed playing with to make uh, an unusual shape. Most of us are familiar with uh, squares, 
and half square triangles and even quarter square triangles that use 90 degree and 45 degree lines. But this is a 60 degree triangle and a lot of people think that it's a challenge. Uh, it doesn't have to be when you have good tools. I often say that uh, piecing a quilt depends on the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing, and it all starts with the cutting. So the Quilter Select rulers have that non-slip coating on the back. Mm -hmm. To protect it, you want to keep your hands off of it as much as possible. There's no reason to be touching the back. Today, of course, we have oily oil on our hands. We have uh, sanitizer. A lot of us are hand sanitizer still, and cream, hand cream, things like that. So using um, a great little suction cup handle like this one from Quilter Select makes it really easy to lift the ruler and turn it and use it without having to keep picking it up and running your fingers on the back of it. So that's a good tip that I hadn't uh, thought about. On the website for Quilter Select, which is quilterselect.com, you can find uh, projects, videos, things with for the rulers, particularly for this one. There's even a QR code on the label that you can scan right into and go directly to the videos. There are uh, lots of projects, and then there are even several coloring pages. This is one that is made from two different triangles that they look like diamonds. This is a, one of the pages in a project that's on the website. And then there's even coloring pages, which is a really good way for you to plan your colors as you're working with this shape. So those are uh, acts, um, assets that are available to you that are there. So let's take a look at this ruler. I have been working with a large project this year and I have some leftover jelly roll strips. Uh, these are Tula Pink fabrics and I have quite a few of them still left over and I thought I would work with them a little bit and see how this ruler works. I took two jelly roll strips, they're two and a half inches which is a standard jelly roll size, and I sewed them together down the long seam and I pressed the seam open on the back. Then this makes this about four and a half inches. With the pinked edges, it may be a little bit longer than that, but I used four and a half inches for my measure. Then all I have to do is lay the ruler on, uh, I decided I wanted these to be equal, so, and because they're the same size fabrics, I, half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So I lay, uh, put the two and a quarter line right there on the seam line, and now I'm ready to cut. I could have moved this all the way over to the corner, but by offsetting it just a little, about maybe a half an inch or so, this will give me, this piece will be a filler. It'll be a half of a triangle that I'll be able to use on an either end of my quilt when I get ready to make it. So um, that's just a way to save a little bit of fabric by using a little bit more fabric and I can move that over just a little bit. I use about a half an inch there at the bottom or so. Okay, by putting this uh, two and a quarter line right on the seam line, I'm ready to cut. The, it's a simple matter to go straight up and then come around straight over. And I'm going to move this a little bit so that my hand is not in the way and readjust the ruler. If I were standing, I wouldn't have to move it at all. Uh, I, for camera purposes, I am sitting. So I bring this along and I line up that line and I come back over here. Okay. What this shows you is that now we have uh, an equilateral triangle, which means the three sides are equal sides. This side is straight of grain because it was cut on a long straight of grain fabric and the two sides, other sides are bias. It's perfectly fine there, ready to go if you want to leave it just the way it is. If you want, uh, one of the great things about this, I discovered when I cut this this way, um, by having this chopped off edge, the point is chopped off, which would be bulk that we're going to get rid of anyway, you can easily see where the straight of grain lies. Now on this particular pattern with two fabrics, it's obvious that this is the straight of grain. But when you have a different size, a, um, a different pattern, it can be difficult when you pick this up to know which side, if all three of the corners are chopped off, to know where is the straight of grain. You actually have to pull on it to see, oh yes, this is bias, this is straight of grain. But by having just the one corner tipped off, that point chopped, I know exactly that this is the straight of grain. So I thought that was just another good way to think about using the rulers. If you want to, there's no reason why you can't clip the other um, 
points off as well. And that does help to make it possible, uh, make it a little easier for alignment. The 60 degree angle can be a little bit difficult to, not difficult, but just challenging for most of us in the beginning to use. So by aligning these and putting the ruler right back on the two sides, align it right in there, then just cutting off that little point on that side just a little bit. When you go to put this onto the next one, so I'm going, let's say I want to sew the two of these together, and I put this over here, you see instantly where they align. The top is flat with the top, and I haven't cut the underneath one, but you can see if I don't have it cut, I can still see where to align it. These lines are straight, and these edges, the edges are straight so that you're ready to go, and then you can sew it right along there. So that is just a terrific little thing that works really well with this ruler. Chop off the other points if you want, or leave them still on. It doesn't matter. Another really great shape that I discovered that I could make with this ruler are diamonds. And let's take a look at those. Okay, Here's another leftover project. I seem to have lots of those, and I don't like to put the fabric all back in the closet if I don't have a lot of it left. So these are some K-Facet fabrics, and um, they're just really fun, and they're big prints. And I decided I would make some diamonds when I read the instructions for using this ruler and saw how easy it was to cut 60-degree diamonds. So the only math that you calculate is what size do you want this diamond to be from long tip to long tip, the lengthwise point? In this case, I decided I wanted eight inches as a finished size of the diamond, and that's because this is a big print and I wanted to show it off. To the eight inch size, you add one half of an inch. That's all you need to do. So I cut a strip of fabric that was eight and a half and folded it in half into a four and a quarter inch strip of fabric. I've just took it to the iron and pressed it and folded it in half, and now it is four and a quarter, half of eight and a half. Once again, okay, I put the four and a quarter line on the fold, and I have offset it just a little bit so that I will get two pieces of this, a left and a right mirror images, since there are two layers here. And I've got the fold down here on the wide part. So let me cut this one straight up. I'll turn it just enough so that you can see both cuts, placing it just right. Again, if I was standing, it wouldn't be necessary. Okay. A little bit. okay. And there are those first two. Here is the one. Those two cuts gives me this one diamond, and that is beautiful. I love that. I'm going to be, have fun working with that one. When you go to make the next one, we don't rotate the ruler. We start right here. And so we just simply come up here, cut this line and this line. I have a smaller triangle that I may use for a different project, but this one gives me the second one, diamond. And I would continue on all the way along. I have quite a few cut already that I had worked from. So they're just really fun. Now, if you remember this picture that I showed you earlier, this was made from uh, triangles but it is the exact same shape as the diamond. So I could use these as full diamonds here and alternate them with solid uh, di background diamonds, whatever fabric I wanted to use, and have a very quick quilt made out of this with no trouble at all. And then you can see the half pieces that fill in on the sides. That's how that part works. These, okay. Here are those triangles that I showed you earlier, the equilateral triangles made from the um, jelly roll, and there are several of those in place here. I just put those together. And then this large print is an Anna Maria Horner print. It's a big, bold print, and I cut the same size. I used a four and a half inch strip, cut those equilateral triangles into that print, and then I did the same thing with the white. I created and used a four and a half inch strip of white, and I'm just alternating them as I go. And that way I can use some of these, some of the Anna Maria Horner, and fill in with the white. I thought it was pretty neat, and I've started on this row. Each of these are individual rows. So once the entire, when I decide what size this quilt is going to be, and um, I know that will be based on how much of this Anna Maria Horner print I have left, when I get that decided, I'll simply make the rows and then add all the rows together and have a finished quilt. So I hope you'll try the 60 degree triangle ruler if it's a shape you're not familiar with. It is a great tool to make that wonderful shape um, 
easy to, to cut. And the more accurate your cutting is, the more accurate your piecing is. So I hope you'll give it a try. So there you have it. There's the second video. I uh, hope that you saw something of interest to you there. Uh, the good folks at the Quilt Show store are putting together a package deal should you wish to purchase these. They've ordered in a large supply, and as soon as it arrives, they'll make the big announcement that they have the items, uh, this the two ruler deal available for you to order. If you buy both of the rulers, they will throw in a self erase pen, the Quilter Select self erase pen. And I really like that pen. I use that just about on every project. It is a great pen, uh, marking pen. It, it comes out, which is always the important thing with any kind of a marking tool. So um, that's going to be on the Quilt Show store uh, very soon. Thank you so much. Man, she is such a good teacher. Um, she's so good. So let me answer a couple questions that you had. Um, Noreen wanted to know why not just flip the ruler with the um, triangles because, and, and Chris, I think you said it, because there is a fold there. So you want to have the fold so you get the full diamond. So that's what that's about. You're um, going to have a little extra fabric, all right? And then these things, these handles, are so that they're not to hold. They're not to hold when you're cutting. No. You want to hold it with your hand down, rotary cutter there. And um, it just helps you move it because these are non-slip. In, in the beginning, it was like, okay, I got used to it. But if you're not used to using a non-slip, it's kind of weird to have to pick it up. And then you're getting the grease of your hands and all that kind of stuff. And when we were in the height of the pandemic and we were all using um, hand sanitizers, that played heck on the back. However, it still worked, which is amazing. Now, if it falls off, good old spit. There, get it where you want it. And there you go. Okay, and my guess here is maybe you're trying to, you know, be too rough. Just pick it up like this. This is how you're going to get your hand to do. Um, we have the tw uh, 28, the 28 millimeter cutting cutter coming out this fall. So that's great. Okay, so again, I think Barbara is such an amazing teacher. I think with this ruler. It's the math. I'm going to have to watch it a couple times. It's the math, like say for the quarter square triangles. When I saw her demo this, I'm sitting there going, this is going to use such less fabric. It's, it, you know, like if you're doing a quarter square triangle, you have to cut yourself the big, huge square and then cut it corner to corner. No, I thought that was amazing with this, okay? So I'm going to have to get that math in my brain. But but I saw this one first, and I darn near had a heart attack over this because I've always been afraid of this block and this shape because basically I just work with a 6 by uh, 12, and I would be, have to be dependent on shapes on here. It, I hadn't gotten mine yet, all right, when I saw this video, and it was like, I want my ruler, and it came and I can't wait to work with it. I'm wondering if I can do it when we get into bow ties. Or not bow ties, tie quilts. Okay, so we have them in the store. The reason I would have preferred to show one video one time and then another video another time, but I personally would not be happy if I, say, bought this one and then we showed this one and I'm going, doggone it, because it's shipping, right? So the deal we have right now is if you want to, uh, we are going to throw in um, a self-erase marker for you. Uh, you can't have enough of these, all right? So John, and I'll talk about the contest. Hey, John, come in here. I'm a little, I'm not really looped out, but I'm a little looped out. I, I need you to come and talk about the contest because four people are going to win this set all right so i and it, the contest closes on cut off on the 10th of this month but where do they right. go so i'm putting that up on the site so i put it up already in the uh, chat i'll put it in the comments also and then you can go and enter um and you win both rulers right and, and so in fact i think we should throw in one of the little handles too it's your so, money yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
<laughs> so go scoot around the site. You'll find where to enter. And okay, so we'll throw in a little handle for you. Big Daddy. Daddy Warbucks, right? So um, can you enter more than once? Phyllis, no. Don't do that. One entry per household, please. <laughs> but I like how you think. <laughs> okay. Um, early next week, I'm getting, as I said, the new, the new, yeah, of, on my boobs. And I can tell you right now, it knocks me on my butt. So as soon as I can get myself back together, we will have another live. Thank you for being so patient with the um, irregularities of the presentation of the whole thing. What I'm gonna do when I'm done here is I'm getting off and Lilo is gonna, I'm, we're gonna do a pre-record with Lilo about her trip to Guatemala. And I am really excited. She was sharing with me yesterday how she was gonna present it. And I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal because it's centric around textiles. Okay. Oh, Linda said you can order in the newsletter today. All right. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Um, so this Saturday, D. Christopher is going to be doing, I think it's Cathedral Windows, and I think she's going to show different ways to do it. That's another block I've always run in the other direction. So... Um, all is good. Life is good. Life couldn't be better. Still no word on follow-up treatment. Arr. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go play with Lilo so that I can bring you that presentation next time I'm up and feeling spiffy, all right? And I know for myself, I'm going to have to watch the first part of the video with Barbara to understand the math because I am so ingrained with adding seven eighths or adding one and a quarter um, for like a quarter square triangle, as she mentioned. Okay, this is running super, super um, long. Okay, so I'm gonna say bye-bye and I'll stay tuned. I'll let you know as soon as I know something. And I so appreciate your prayers. I, 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 I can't even, I, I, I I, I've, I've said this before, and I'm not just blowing smoke. I have never felt the presence of love globally how I have felt from you. And I know I'm not the only one going through this. I know it because I'm getting letters from you. And by George, we are going to get through this with flying colors. So I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.